Hey guys, are you having trouble committing to your goals? Say you're gonna start something but never finish? Trust me, you are not alone. Stay tuned for the top four reasons why I could not commit to myself. I would just make a bunch of excuses up for why I couldn't commit. And for that reason, I didn't want nobody in my business. Like, stay over there. Get out of my business. Okay. If it's your first time watching, welcome, boo. I'm so happy to have you here. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit like on this video, and also hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date with all of my content. There's a conversation and a party going on in the comments, so make sure you join that so we can just talk about this because if I'm going through it with this, I know somebody out there somewhere has to be feeling me. Okay, so let's jump right into reason number one. Every committed relationship requires trust. And in order to trust someone, you have to know them. So when I asked myself this question, my initial answer to this was, of course I know me. Like nobody knows me better than I know me. But something wasn't lining up in the self-esteem department. When it came to committing my goals, I just didn't have the confidence I needed to push through. I will say the first 25 years of my life, it felt like I was just going on autopilot grew up, went to school, went to college, had experiences. But when everything comes to a stop, oh my God! when I turned 30 last year, that was tough because I had to completely relearn who I was. It was really hard on myself. I went through a period of depression because I, I wasn't the person that I used to be. Like everything was different. And I had to learn to give myself that grace and reintroduce me to me. So the journey of me knowing who I was consisted of knowing who created me. I really had to stand on the promises of God. Now y'all, I would lie to myself again or um, say, yeah, I know who God is. I stand on his promises. I was born and raised in the church. I know what's up. Like, I know God, we have a relationship. But again, there was a disconnect there. It wasn't really translating in the self-esteem department. I didn't think that I had what it took to complete the things that God downloaded on the inside of me. Like he would give me an idea or give me inspiration and I would be like, that's cool, that's great. And then just stop there. Or I would begin and just have no follow through. And I feel like for me personally, that's a slap in the face to God because God said, number one, I formed you in your mother's womb, which means that he knows everything about me. He made me with intention. So if he downloaded something into my heart, he knows that I have what it takes to carry it out. And I had to keep replaying that in my head because the the fear, the doubts, the insecurities would just hover over me when it came to completing something that I thought was just too big for me to handle. But if God gave it to you, he knows that you're not gonna have to do it on your own. He's gonna give you what you need to complete it and carry it out. Boom. He has a plan and a purpose for me, which means he has a plan and a purpose for you too. This little thing, this thing that he's downloaded into you, whether it be a business or going back to school or whatever it is, it's a part of the bigger plan and purpose. He's shaping you, molding you, cultivating you to do exactly what he's called you to do. He's not gonna fail you, he's not gonna humiliate you. So I had to replay those things over and over again in my head so I'll be able to carry out what needed to be done. Committing to yourself requires confidence. So no matter how things may look on the outside, you have to know who you are and walk in it. Reason number two. So I will make everyone else's stuff so much more important than my own stuff. During quarantine, I would say, this was the time where I really noticed that everybody else had a priority in my life. I really um, made everyone else's situations, their issues, everything much more important than my own. There were a lot of things that I had avoided for so long, a lot of deep rooted issues that had not healed that I just would ignore by busying myself. So everything has a root. Now your root may be different than my root, but here is why I was so much more accommodating to other people, unresolved and unhealed trauma. So yeah, yeah, I just avoided um, some things that have happened in my past that really damaged my self-esteem, that really came to destroy like who I was. I just pushed that to the side. I detached myself from it. I sought out validation from others. Being accommodating to someone made me feel 
needed and wanted and you know if somebody was going through a difficult situation helping them solve their problem for a second it made me feel like I was solving my own and y'all please don't be like me that's not the way to handle it if um, if you've noticed that you've been overly accommodating and your life is just falling apart there's a root there I really had to sit down I had to get into therapy I had to do the spiritual work like I had to unravel all that junk so I could heal once I was able to really get to the root of that, I'm still doing that work so I could break that toxic cycle. Now, if this is something that you're dealing with, just know that if you ain't right, ain't nothing right. You are the CEO of your company. If you're not together, nothing is together. Reason number three. And another thing I would do was also compare myself to others. And when I'm not in my lane, but I'm too focused on comparing. I neglect the commitment because I'm thinking, oh, this is what they're doing to get more views or more likes. So dang, I'm not making that. So mine could never. What? Do what you're supposed to do. If you're supposed to open up a bakery, open that bakery up. I don't care if there's five bakeries on the block. I was on a flight and this guy told me that when it comes to selling something, you're not really selling the thing. You're selling you. You're selling your personality. So sometimes we get so caught up and what other people are doing and we end up making like this cookie cutter version of ourselves that looks like everybody else and you can't be them and be you too and i had to learn that i'm like yo so if i vlog and she vlogs and he vlogs that's okay because number one there's space for everybody number two i'm selling me and once i got that in my head like i once i started to internalize that i realized whoa like there's no reason for any of us to compare ourselves to someone else you know, there is no competition. I am my competition, okay? Straight up. Sometimes you gotta be a little G with yourself. You gotta whip her into shape. Whip him into shape. So here's the fourth and final reason why I could not commit to myself. I didn't allow accountability into my life. Because I didn't know who I was, I would always operate from a place of insecurity. But there will be a few people who really care about me and who really love me and want me to see me thrive and want more content or want more things from me. And they'll be like, Eb, hey, what happened, girl? We need stuff. What's going on? And I just be like, ah, you know, I got XYZ going on, which really what I was doing was out helping everybody else and doing stuff that was not even pertaining to my goal. I would just make a bunch of excuses up for why I couldn't commit. And for that reason, I didn't want nobody in my business. Like, stay over there, get out of my business. Because when you have somebody in your business, especially when they care about you, when they love you, they're gonna hold you accountable. Especially if you're good at what you're doing because no one can see themselves. If we don't have people in our lives to hold us accountable, we're gonna continue to just go on autopilot. And next thing you know, we look up and 30 years have gone by and we haven't made any changes. Like nobody has pushed us or motivated us to do what it is we're supposed to do. So I highly, highly recommend that if you have that same issue, if you have an issue with commitment, um, or if you are you have such a wall up around your life, or if you're super, super private, allow those people who really care about you and love you to hold you accountable. I, I'm an advocate of mentorship now. Like I'm such an advocate. Um, I didn't have mentorship in my life before, not because I didn't have mentorship available to me, but I just always kept myself closed off because I was insecure. I didn't want people to point out what I was doing wrong. I didn't want people to hold me accountable for doing things that I said I would do. And um, that's not the right way to look at it. We need mentorship. We need people in our lives to push us forward to be the best versions of ourselves. So that's all that I have for you guys today. If you like what you saw and it was your first time visiting, please do not forget to hit the subscribe button. I would love to have you stick around. But hey, if you don't wanna subscribe yet, go ahead and watch another video. Then hit the subscribe button because you know, trust, commitment, yeah, we gotta get it together. Um, anywho, I love you guys so much. God loves you more. Be you, be inspired. Until next time, peace.